with our 3D printing tip of the month, and I wanted to talk about how to make 3D prints stronger. You see, most 3D prints, FDM 3D prints at least, are hollow. Kevin, I'll have you hold this up. Sure. You held up the last part. <laughs> um, and so most FDM uh, fused deposition modeling 3D prints, uh, they're hollow on the inside, at least to, to some extent. And so this little brick has different infill patterns. Most 3D prints have shells on the outside, different outlines. And then they have infill, which is just like a grid or a honeycomb on the inside that supports the print itself so that it doesn't collapse onto itself. Um, and depending on how you play with the settings around shells and infill will dictate how strong your part is. And, and how much material you use, right? And how much material you use, how heavy your part is. How long it takes to print. How long it takes to print. How easily stuff passes through it. or Yeah. yeah Lots so of considerations. It's, a, it's an important part of making strong models, functional prototypes, jigs and fixtures. A lot of the common uses for FDM printing is learning when to use what settings. Um, it's easy and maybe a... a quick way out to say well i'm just gonna print everything solid i just want everything to be as strong as it could possibly be but by doing that you're gonna waste material right right and so i actually don't think i recorded i hit the pause button <laughs> <laughs> um what a lot of people don't know well actually i gotta have you guess first kevin yeah what do you think plays more into the strength of a 3d printed part the shells on the outside or the infill on the inside well, since we're talking about infill, I'm going to go ahead and say the infill okay. of, Is real of the part. Because, I mean, that's really where you're going to get the structural durability. I do mean, you know the what, shell could be... Do you know what we mean when we say shells or contours? Like the outside. Right. So if you look at each of these squares, we can thicken that up. Yeah, like the, like the, the cell yeah. wall. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hey, Kevin, Kevin, you're doing great. Look at that. <laughs> the mitochondria is the powerhouse, is the powerhouse of the cell. Of the cell. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're done. Um, yeah, I, I have to assume that, yeah, depending on you could make these weaker or stronger or they could have, you know, break points in different places. Or this is, These are so neat to me. You have about a million of these at your desk. I love <laughs> yeah, checking those out I all do. the time. I'm, I'm guilty. Um, if you're watching this video, pause right now. Leave your guess in the comments as to what has a bigger impact on strength of a 3D printed part, either the shells on the outside or the infill on the inside. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and wait. Okay, you're good. Ben, <laughs> what's, uh, what's your guess? Shells or infill? What has a bigger impact? Well, I'm just thinking about people, and uh, we'd be pretty <laughs> gross looking without skeletons. So what is that? The skin would be the shell. I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. We'd, also good analogy, be interesting take. we'd also look pretty gross without skin, though. So, <laughs> But we'd be I standing. Mean, you'd still have a form. I mean, there's a museum of different cadavers without their skin, so you can see all their muscular structures. Yeah, those gross me out. Yeah, no. but it's still way better to look at than a pile of skin. I'm confused how we got here. Anyway. <laughs> this took a real weird yeah, turn. So, okay, well, but, then, what I think is that going, I think going back. Infill Rabbit. is very important for structural integrity. Gotcha. Well, Ken, you probably know the, the correct answer here. What's more important? Um, I would say it's slightly application dependent, but we usually see more impact from increasing the shell thickness. Oh, and dang it. Uh, you tricked me. Uh, yeah, see, I distracted you guys with the with the fun infill patterns, you but did. that's that's the right answer. And so uh, typically you see a bigger impact just by thickening up the outer shell. So bigger impact, what, is, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? So by default, most 3D printing slicers only put one or two shells on the outside of a part. And then the inside is anywhere between zero and 100% density mm -hmm. of whatever pattern that, that you choose. Um, and so if you take a part from... 10% infill to 20% infill, just for example, that's not going to make the part as strong as adding an extra shell. Gotcha. Okay. We should test that. We did layer direction as a stress test. We did. But we didn't do infill and shell strengths. Right. Well, that's because I already know the answer, Ben. That's why we're talking oh, yeah? about it now. <laughs> All right. I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> take my word for it. No, lots of people have tested this over time. Not that we shouldn't test it. it could be a fun use of an afternoon. Um, 
but typically shells have a bigger impact. Um, this is for a few reasons. One, it's usually dependent on how the part is loaded in the application. Um, but more often than not, the infill uh, just supports the part. The actual shell distributes the force. Um, on top of that, when you have shells next to each other, kind of being drawn right next to each other, mm -hmm. um, the plastic can fuse together a little bit better uh, because it's drawn along the exact same path versus with these infill patterns, it's really only contacting the outside shell in a relatively small area. There's less contact surface right. between, yeah, that and makes so sense. so the less surface area that you have in between tool paths means less adhesion between those tool paths, which means not as strong of a part. Unless you anneal it? Yeah, and kneeling is a whole separate topic that we're not getting into. <laughs> ben is so passionate. He comes back to <laughs> annealing quite often. At least once every other month. Now he brings like, up yeah. annealing. The only flip to that rule would be as you add more and more shells, your stiffness is going to go up. Sure. So your durability may go down. Right. And Naturally. that's a whole yeah. other can of worms that we could get into of stiffness versus durability yeah. versus impact strength versus tensile. Um, Adam, we got a whole new format. Don't give it all away at once. <laughs> right. So we will get back to all of those wonderful topics in your next 3D printing tip of the month. But for right now, keep in mind that if you want to make a stronger part while still conserving material, you're probably better off increasing the shell thickness of your part compared to just increasing your infill density. Thought thought provoking question, Adam. Where's yes. the AI that gives you the ideal infill pattern based on what your design is? Uh, I don't think that exists yet, yet. but that would be yet. super cool. One day. Yeah, one day. Uh, get get on it, programmers out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would just go I'm back sure to I'm sure you can figure it out. Go back to uh, what's it called? Generative design. Just see what comes out of there. Yeah, well, there's that. It's true. Um, anyway, our next segment, uh, we're going to move away from the 3D printing applications and the tips, um, as fun and nerdy as that is. And Ben has a comment for us. We're going to start responding with...